Welcome to the city of Pearland, Texas. Our storied history dates back to the days of emptied prairie land and ambitious settlers looking for opportunity for themselves and their families. The tenacity of these early settlers formed the backbone of a thriving community that continues to grow. Pearland is one of the fastest growing cities in Texas, positioned on a growth curve that extends well into the 21st century. We invite you to take an inside look at one of our greatest cities in America. You see some cities that uh, for some reason or another, they just seem to deteriorate as they grow. And we've, our government here, city government, has done a good job. Quite interesting that uh, initial leadership of our community, our mayors, uh, Gibbons and uh, Carlton McComb and uh, Dan Keller and some of the others that uh, started out, they were all professionals. One of them was a, was a, was a, was a school teacher. And one of them was a coach during the day but he was a very visionary person that, uh, that uh, set up the ideas and the concepts. And I think the, the basic feeling of everyone that has been pre, pre, prior, uh, prior mayors has been, this has to be a fam family town. There's one Pearland family whose ancestor, Dr. Calhoun Hunter, was a member of the Austin 300 family. Colonel Zelensky who was the one that bought the piece of property and designed it to be what it is today. And I think it's unique that we have a design from, a, from an individual from Europe. Uh, back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, uh, Sunday baseball was a big thing, particularly in Pearland. Pearland's always been a baseball community. And uh, Sunday afternoon games, people would look forward to to come over here to see their town team play and played a lot of games out here what's now Zelensky Park. At that time, uh, the Parks and Recreation Department had made it into a park with all the trees and everything, and it was great Sunday activity. Each, each person of the Austin 300 was awarded land according to whether they were gonna be a farmer or a cattleman, but uh, at that time, Pearland was simply uh, still Indian territory, basically. Pearland was established in September of 1894, and so it was laid down across the tracks were already there. Well, it was officially called Mark Bout in 1894, and then gradually they planted some pear trees. And there were no trees in this area. This was really a prairie. It was really nothing but grass and uh, maybe a few bushes. As a result, people came in and planted things, and they planted pear trees because they would grow fast, and, uh, and uh, everybody likes pears. So he looked around and he says, oh, pears, so he named it Pearland. What was platted as Pearland, the old Pearland, was Orange Street on the north, Walnut on the south, Galveston on the east, Austin on the west. Typical school day for the students in 1893 was getting up at 4 a.m., going out to milk the cows, and then after the chores, students would clean up, eat breakfast, and leave for school by 7 a.m. After school, arriving home about 5 p.m., the cows had to be milked again, and studying was done after supper. Bedtime was 8 p.m. At that time, rail transportation was the way people moved around the country, and for citizens of Pearland, it meant a way for them to go into Houston to get their supplies. According to all the stories we've read, it was a social point too. People would go down to meet the trains, they'd sit and visit, and uh, it was, that was the only way they could go into Houston. So that's where Pearland got started. It never did get incorporated though until 60, so it was just a kind of a town, that was what it was, crossroads really. Until we incorporated, the Lions Club basically took care of the city. They put in what few sidewalks were put in, they put up street lighting. The Pearland Police Department actually started in 1960. In the early days in my career, there were times when I was the only unit on the street. Prior to that, they had just utilized a city marshal type of program to handle law enforcement. When the EMS started, David and Frankie Smith really contributed a lot to the city of Pearland. David and Frankie were on every run that EMS made. Well, we, we progressed from the days when uh, you called the fire department seven digit number and it was a party line and those that were members of the volunteer fire department picked up and listened to where the call is and responded. 
and then that moved into the area of a town siren and then moved into pagers that were carried by volunteers. This is a uh, bullet resistant vest that was state of the art in about the mid uh, 70s. And back when I was in high school in 74, I mean, we saw the relationship between the community and the police department and the city as a whole as being, being outstanding. And I think that's one of the things that makes Pearland very, very special. Uh, over the next 50 years, the department grew and grew until there were four fire stations and an all-volunteer fire department. Well, when I first came here, I was moving out of Houston. I wanted a good place to live to raise my daughter. And uh, there was nothing here but a Dairy Queen and everything closed at six o'clock. And I thought, what have I done? Moved out to the boonies somewhere. Like I say, moved here when my son was five. There was no 288, there was just farmland. There was nothing here to do. We just play bingo and play cards and dominoes and that kind of stuff. Most people from the Gulf Coast area know about the history of the 1900 storm. Well, in 1915, another hurricane came along. A new Pearland school was built, and it cost about $6,000 to construct. Well, in 1915, a hurricane came along, and it destroyed the second floor of this school. And for the next 22 years, students in Pearland had to be bused to attend high school over in Webster. The town nearly got wiped out. A lot of them went back north because, I mean, they, they were living in shacks. They didn't, they didn't really have any nice homes at that time. The police department did perform some rescues during those events, uh, during the early ones, uh, especially during the flood in 79. Uh, but as a chief of police and as an officer at the time, what really amazed me was seeing the citizens and the city as a whole all pull together to work their way through these events. And I think that's, that's probably one of the things that makes Pearland very special. A variety of fruit trees were planted in the early days and wiped out by the Galveston hurricane. After the 1915 storm, they pretty well gave up on trying to grow oranges and fruit and one thing or another, but just became hay and cattle country again. Yeah, there's some figs. That yeah, they did grow figs. Fig plants became a little more prevalent. They were cooked, peeled, canned, and sold as jam. They built the fig plant, which was on the west side of the railroad track, just down past this railroad station. Uh, but that was a very important part of Pearland. The fig boom came after Pearland was already named, but any sooner and we could have been living in fig land. When people start looking for a place to live, that's one of probably the first thing they look at is the school system. In 1937, Pearland High School was established. They voted on the Oilers to be their school mascot because of the Hastings oil fields nearby. They also voted on maroon and white to be the school colors to kind of mimic the reddish brown color of the oil that was being drilled at the time. Throughout the growth in Pearland, the schools have been at the heart of the community. The first school was built in 1893, and it was a one-room schoolhouse with a wood-burning stove. It had one teacher, Miss Nanny Rogers, who had 23 students at the time. I ran for the position and uh, became mayor in 1978. During that period of time, Pearland, I think, grew from something like about uh, 4,000 to, to a city of about 5,500. And we were able to become what is known as a general law city. In Texas, cities under 5,000 population are what they call general law cities. We became a home rule city by charter in 70, uh, late 73 and early 74 because we were over 5,000 people. We brought back these ideas of why can't we be an upscale, different growing, vi a viable city? And we started putting in place certain things in, that would make us certainly different. We have good, good uh, council people and, and people to run the city the way we need it. We hired a land planner and he came out and worked with us to design us a plan for how we could grow, th grow in a more orderly fashion. And I think at that point, we were doing things that other cities did not do. Most people don't realize that uh, 518, Farnham Market Road 518, stopped at Cullen Boulevard. As we grew, we realized that land out west of Pearland was, uh, was, was ours out there, and uh, we needed to start looking at it. Probably the major 
growth in the city really didn't occur, I don't think, until about 1999 to the year 2000, and the growth exploded. We've gained from 37,000 to 139,000, which has placed us the second fastest growing in the state of Texas and the 14th fastest growing city in the, in the nation. So many stores have popped up. And the new things going in that's really making it nice to be able to get handy to everything. Uh, the west side being, say, from 35 out to 288, there's a lot of younger people, which is great. We have new big houses built out there, which will help our tax base. You know, we're blessed in Pearland to have a, a great working relationship among builders, developers. A fire marshal's office, city council has uh, believed in strong fire codes. So the number of major incidents in our city is relatively low. It was just a small town. I liked it because I could go just about anywhere there in Pearland. Well, I like it because it's not as big as Houston. So here I'm getting where I can get around. And uh, I don't know, it's just a nice size town. It's growing. I worked a lot, but when I was home, I had wonderful neighbors that we've been living by each other 38 years. And we're like family and we're always there for each other. And it <clears throat> the city itself is just amazing. I think that's, that's probably one of the things that makes Pearland very special is our relationship with the community. When you build it, they will come and we're building it. <laughs>